we're going to be talking about anamorphics and specifically a really interesting combo that you may not have seen. I don't know that I really got this from anywhere other than I just thought I'd test it out to see if this combo would work. I haven't seen this recommended anywhere else. Maybe someone else has done it, but it works really, really well. But I'll first start with just saying that anamorphic shooting is not for everyone. Most of my projects, in fact, I'm not shooting anamorphic. It's not very practical in terms of speed and efficiency on set. It's really gonna slow you down. And a lot of the times, if it's a client project or whatever it is you're working on, doesn't always require that anamorphic look because if you're shooting anamorphic, it's not just to crop the top and the bottom. Of course, you can do that with letterboxing, however however you want. You can pick whatever aspect ratio you want and do it all in post-production. No, if you wanna shoot anamorphic, it's to get a certain anamorphic look. And it's not just the lens flares either. There's definitely a certain style to it. And so I'll say like, I don't shoot with this lens hardly at all, but if you're interested in anamorphic shooting, I thought I'd share at least this combination to see if it might be right for you. Now, to get right down to it, this is a two-piece combo. So the front of this is the SLR Magic Anamorphot 50. It's a 2X anamorphic. I specifically got the 2X because if you're gonna shoot anamorphic, you might as well go all out. 1.33 is all right. It's like a decent anamorphic squeeze, but 2X is really where it's at that's gonna give you like much more exaggerated characteristics of the anamorphic lens. And then the back, which is really you know, the taking lens, this is where kind of, I don't know, just everything just clicked. I've used the, uh, the Anamorpha and a lot of other lenses that it doesn't really perform as well, and we'll get to that, but this is a cheapo lens. It is actually the Mikey 35 millimeter 1.4 micro four thirds lens. Yes, this is a micro four thirds setup. I'm sorry if that disappoints you. This particular combination works best on micro four thirds. Now, the anamorphot you can use on a super 35 camera lens, you can use on a full frame camera lens, but you're gonna be a little bit more limited in terms of what lenses you can pick and use with it. They're gonna need to be a little bit longer than 35, otherwise you're gonna get porthole and all these annoying things. You really, you're taking lens, you're back if you're doing a setup like this. Now, granted, there are a lot of cool anamorphic uh, lenses coming out. There's the Siru, line of lenses that are anamorphics that are all just like one lens. SLR Magic also has some already pre-built cine lenses that you can get. So there's a lot of anamorphic options out there. There's some high-end ones. But if you're looking for something like this where you have kind of your anamorphic adapter lens and then your taking lens and you're putting them together, I find this combination actually works pretty well. And again, it's this cheap Mikey 35 millimeter, it's $100. And then if you look at the SLR Magic Anamorphot 50 2X Anamorphic Adapter, it's like $1,000 brand new if you're buying it from B&H. But you probably can find it on eBay or elsewhere, maybe a little bit cheaper. But I do really like this one because it is that 2X. Some of the newer ones like the Siru uh, lenses, they're only 1.3X, which works if you're shooting 16 by nine. But the great thing about Micro Four Thirds and this combination is that obviously you're gonna use it with something like a GH5, a GH5S, something that lets you shoot anamorphic four by three, which is really what you want a 2X anamorphic for. You wanna shoot proper four by three anamorphic so that you can stretch it 2X and get that nice cinemascope aspect ratio. The Blackmagic cameras can also do this. So the Ursa Mini or the Pocket Cinema cameras can also do anamorphic but really there aren't that many other cameras out there that do it well in the same way. The GH5, you can actually have stabilization going while you're shooting anamorphic, which is kind of a, a unique aspect to that camera. So why does this work so well? Well, not only is it incredibly cheap for an anamorphic setup, many other taking lenses that I've used with this adapter don't really work all that well. So of course there's the famous Sigma 18 to 35 if you shoot with a GH5 or any kind of crop sensor camera, you probably know of the Sigma 18 to 35. Wonderful zoom lens. Does not work all that great with this anamorphic lens. You're really looking for a taking lens that has a smaller front diameter. So if I unscrew this off of here, you can see that this is a 49 millimeter front and I have an adapter uh, step up ring on here that takes it to 62 which is the back of the rear element for the anamorphic. So 62 on the back, and then it's 77 on the front for filters or whatever else you wanna add. So if you had a variable ND or something like that. And that's the combination, you put them together. I also find that these kind of cheap mechanical, 
just like basic, basic lenses do a lot better than some of the fancy autofocus lenses that are out there. Uh, this has manual aperture and manual focus, and both rings are declicked, which is nice. And they're kind of tough. I don't know how to describe it other, otherwise. They're just very kind of stiff. So a lot of times if you're shooting with a combination of two lenses and you're changing focus, you're changing aperture, and like things can get bumped and mess everything up, throw it out of alignment, it's kind of nice that this lens works as well as it does, just kind of holding its position, holding everything in place, and you're not gonna lose a spot while you're in the middle of a shoot. Also, what works really nice about this setup is that it's relatively sharp. Many other anamorphic lenses, um, or at least taking lenses that you pair with an anamorphic can be really soft and you have to stop way down to like F4 or 5.6 until they really sharpen up. Thankfully, this combination does work well but again, it is anamorphic, so we'll look at some test footage and I'll show you kind of what I mean as far as the, the look and feel. But yeah, the 35 millimeter just screws right in here, just like that, no problem, just screws right on. And then there is a back ring that can kind of get your alignment, because obviously just screwing this on, your anamorphic might be misaligned, and so you would just have to rotate it and kind of tighten it. There's a little ring on the anamorphic for that, but that's a minor technical thing. Anyway, let's take a look at some test footage over here in Premiere. And before we get into this, I just wanna say this isn't anything glamorous. This isn't anything fantastic. Like I said before, I don't shoot with this lens all that often. So these are just some test shots I got with this combination showing you kind of what the look and feel of the combination is in case you're curious. So let's take a look at that in Premiere. Here we have a shot uh, filmed kind of overcast day next to a window. This is shot with the GH5 in V-Log. And this is actually 4K60, which is nice that the GH5 lets you shoot slow-mo anamorphic. Another nice little helpful thing there. So this isn't the full maximum 6K anamorphic that you can do on the GH5. Uh, this is the 4K60 and it's shot V-Log. So there's a, a LUT applied that you can see. If you just are curious, that was before and then there's with the LUT. So it's a 2X anamorphic. So you'll see under here, under the width, we've got it stretched two times, which is what you would wanna do. This footage comes in, no, not like that, not 50. Uh, it comes in like that. So four by three looks really weird, looks really squished. That's the point of shooting anamorphic. So when you stretch it back out to the proper, what it's supposed to look like, it's very, very wide. And I'll blow this up even bigger if you wanna take a look at it there. And we can scrub through some of these clips and you can kind of see the look and the, the kind of the vibe of the anamorphic here. Um, you'll see a lot of like bowing at the edges. 35 is about as wide a focal length as you can use for taking lens with this anamorphic on Micro Four Third. If it's Super 35, you're probably looking at like a 50 millimeter lens as being your widest lens. And then if you're full frame, maybe it's upwards of like 70 millimeters or above where you're really gonna want you know that focal length to start and then gets tighter from there. So you can see at the edges, there's a lot of bowing, uh, which is part of the anamorphic look. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. It is what it is. That's how anamorphics look on the wide end anyway with this adapter. If you're shooting more you know, cropped in with a longer uh, focal length uh, as you're taking lens, you'll get less of that effect. But really, I like when I'm shooting anamorphic, I kind of want it to have that ultra wide, as wide as I can get look while still being sharp and keeping things like shallow depth of field, etc. Lots of bowing on this shot. You can see on the corners, the edges, everything's just like curved and kind of like going towards the center. But we're not portholing, you know, we're not actually seeing the anamorphot um, that you can, that can happen if you're any wider, like if you shoot with like a 24 millimeter focal length, which is what I tried initially, uh, not gonna work out for you. So you can see uh, how this looks. It isn't the sharpest image necessarily, but it's also pretty sharp for what it was. I'm, I'm pretty sure I was almost wide open. I don't know if I was exactly 1.4 or if I was F2 for this stuff, but you know, relatively shallow depth of field, you're getting that background blur. Um, but you're still keeping stuff relatively sharp, not as sharp as, you know, a pristine modern lens that's meant to be uh, pixel perfect. This is a little bit more of that uh, stylized cinema look, if you will. And ignore the color grade. If you don't like it, it's just a LUT applied. There's nothing uh, special or fancy going on there. So you could, you know, color it to your liking. Here's some additional shots that were shot Cinelic V um, as well. 
pull these up full screen so you can see them a little bit better. Again, you can see, you know, the straight lines on the edges are kind of curved, but we have some really nice sharpness here. I'll zoom in to 100% so you can take a look. Not the sharpest, mind you, but definitely sharp for this kind of setup. If you've shot with these anamorphics before where it's an adapter and a taking lens, it's, it's really hard to get it right. And thankfully, the SLR Magic uh, Anamorphot has a, a focal ring on itself, so you, you have to dual focus um, sometimes where you're adjusting focus on two different lenses, which can also be kind of irritating. Like I said, shooting anamorphic is not fast or efficient. I don't do it a whole lot but you can if you want that certain look. But certainly uh, sharp enough for uh, certain types of projects. And you will notice that certain setups, like the distance you are from the subject really matters in terms of being able to get it in focus because you have two lenses. So you're focusing here on the anamorphot, like so you have your kind of normal, uh, you have your near, near mode and then normal, that go back and forth and also anywhere in between. So there's many times where I find myself, I'm not really near, I'm not really normal, I'm kind of in between on the anamorphot, and then I'm also adjusting focus on the 35 millimeter, the Mikey lens. So you really have to play with that distance you are from the subject to really get it right. You'll you'll be messing around saying, I can't get in focus, I can't get in focus. It's just, it's just nothing, nothing is looking sharp. And it's usually a combination of one or the other or both really dialing it in. And once you play around with it a little bit, you get kind of used to the way it wants you to focus where you kind of set the anamorphot kind of first where it's like as sharp as it can get. And then you dial in the taking lens for that extra sharpness. Uh, at least that's how it usually ends up working out for me. But it really depends on the distance from your subject and how that changes shot after shot after shot. So I do find times where like, you know, I'm, uh, you know, a, you know, a, a decent, uh, distance from the person. And, uh, it just, maybe I have to do some adjustments on the lens to get it perfectly nailed in there. So you can see not a lot of like flaring happening. I don't have any direct lights pointed, you know, into the lens, but it should give you a kind of a sense of how things look here. If I zoom in here to hundred percent, take another look. Again, this is a low light situation. So again, like that's pretty decent, I'd say, for just like taking a test shot here. Um, no lights, just whatever's in the in the pizza place. And, you know, maybe some people like that, maybe you don't. It's up to you. Uh, personal preference, I suppose. Um, and what you think looks good. It definitely could look better, but you can get some playback there. So I slowed it down. It's 4K60. So you get a sense of kind of what it looks like, feels like. And here's a, a shot where I'm like a little bit too close for where it wants me to get focus. So you'll notice it's not quite as sharp as it was before because I'm a little bit too close for the combination of settings. So there's even an additional uh, front element you can put on here to focus even closer so you can get, it can get out of control really, really fast to where it's just not always practical to shoot that way. Many times you're like, I'll just be better off letterboxing it in post-production if I want that look anyway. And you maybe don't want to deal with the softness or you don't like the bowing in the corners and you might think anamorphic just isn't for me. Well, other people might look at it and go, oh, that looks really cool. I like that. It's unique. It has character because that is the thing about anamorphics. They have an aesthetic and a style that you can't really replicate with just a, a generic spherical lens. It's gonna look you know, accurate, lines are gonna be straight. It's gonna be the way most lenses look. If you want that special anamorphic look, it definitely needs to match the project. And that's why I say 95% of the time I'm not shooting with this. It's only every once in a while that I'll pull it out just kind of for fun or for specialty things uh, here or there where it just feels like it needs that certain something else. But most of the time you're probably fine with spherical. I don't think there's anything else to go through here. So just uh, kind of clicking back through, like, uh, you know, I think this stuff it has that nice shallow depth of field. Things are still sharp. It has the anamorphic aspect ratio. It has that anamorphic characteristic. And it's, uh, you know, up to the personal preference of the shooter, of the viewer, of what they like and what they don't like. Great thing is with this combination, it's not too terribly expensive and there are other ones out there. I just wanted to share this one because I have it, you know, it's personally, I've used it and this seemed to be like a really good 
lens if you have an anamorphic or some other kind of lens, you know, an anamorphic adapter lens where you need a taking lens. These cheap, I'd, I'd recommend look for cheap lenses, small, small front diameter. So this one again was 49 millimeter front diameter on the Mikey lens. So small front diameter, probably, you know, metal mechanical construction. Don't look for anything fancy. Look for cheap, bare bones, basic lenses, even some old, you know, vintage lenses might work well for you, but something around there. If you go wider than 35 on micro four third, you'll start to see the, the inside of the anamorphic. You'll see the, uh, it'll porthole on you. You'll see the inside of it. So 35 is about as wide as you can go. And hopefully you can kind of see that in those shots where you're really getting that. Like it's really, really stretched on those corners, but definitely a fun thing to play around with if you're curious. And I'm sure you could probably pick this stuff up used a little bit cheaper than what it is brand new. Even this lens, let's see, is there like a used price on here? People sell it used. I don't know. It's a hundred bucks and it's a cool, fun, you know, 1.4, 35 millimeter lens for a micro four third. You don't have to use it with the anamorphic. You certainly could just use it as is for regular video and regular photography, although it's not going to autofocus. So if that's important to you, obviously not a consideration there. The anamorphot, would I recommend it? I've talked about it, I mean, years and years ago is when I first got it. And it's really that thing where it's only for the specialty uh, moments and occasions. It's not something that you need or have to have. Uh, I think in general, anamorphic is kind of that way. It's very tempting. It's very attractive because it has beautiful characteristics in certain situations, but it can be a pain to shoot with. So just keep that all in mind. Don't look at it too much like eye candy of like, I have to have it. That looks so cool. And I have to spend the money, maybe play around with it, dip your toe in the water, like start cheap before you go all out and you really invest into, you know, wanting to shoot everything anamorphic and then realizing this just doesn't fit your workflow. Cause it can easily, easily take away from a project cause you, it'll just eat up your time cause you're fiddling with like the technical stuff of like getting the focus right instead of focusing on the other things that are more important, like maybe lighting and direction and all that other stuff that happens on set. So just something to keep in mind, but I do recommend if you were looking for a taking lens, check the, you know, hundred dollar Mikey lens out. It's a, a fun lens to play around with. And then, you know, this is a relatively compact, decent setup, not too big, not too heavy. You definitely don't have to have rails. It's probably a good idea to help support the lens, but you don't have to. So you can make it work. And, you know, something like a GH5 being micro four third, it, it's kind of the perfect combination since the GH5 is so good at shooting anamorphic anyway. 